we're going to find the antiderivative of the function minus x over quantity x plus 1 minus square root of quantity x plus 1. So if we notice there's a composition going on here. So this is going to be an integration by substitution. So let's run through our checklist. For my first step, I'm going to target the inside of the composition. In this case, okay, take your pick. It's going to be x plus 1 on either of these terms. So we let u be equal to x plus 1. Next, I'm going to differentiate this with respect to x. And then it's going to be du times the derivative times dx. And we note derivative of this is 1, so du equals dx. Then we follow our nose. So I substitute u in for x plus 1. So we have two spots for that. I put in du for dx. And then we hope everything cancels out. But in this case, we don't get the cancellation. We're stuck with an x. So what I need to do now is take a look and see if we could solve for x in terms of u. Well, u equals x plus 1. So if I move the 1 over, I'm going to have x equals u minus 1. And now I could put that in. Okay, we're be sure to use parentheses, otherwise we'll mess up the minus signs. Now, I take a look at this. It's not clear what we would do with the u minus square root of u. So if we think back to some of the tricks we have, we can do a difference of two squares. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply my integrand by 1 in the form u plus square root of u over u plus square root of u. So that doesn't change anything. Okay, but we also note when I multiply it by our denominator, we have a difference of two squares. So it's going to be square of the first minus square of the second. So the square root sign goes away. Clean this up a little bit. So what I'm going to have is minus u minus 1, u plus, and I'm going to write my square root as u to the half because that'll be convenient for integration. And then that's all over. Okay, I'll factor the u squared minus u to get u, u minus 1. Now, since I didn't distribute that minus sign through, these are going to cancel out nicely. And then I can distribute the minus sign through my second term, leaving me with minus 1 minus u to the minus 1 half. If I divide this term here by the u, u divided by u is 1. u to the 1 half divided by u is just going to be u to the 1 half minus 1 or minus a half. This we can take the antiderivative of now. Integral of minus 1 with respect to du is just minus u. Integral of u to the minus half with respect to u. So the rule is we add 1, which makes that a, a half. And then I take the exponent, flip it over, gives me a 2. I get rid of the u's by substituting x plus 1 back in. And then I get minus x plus 1 minus 2 square root of x plus 1 plus my constant. Now, typically, we're just going to check the answer by differentiating it and hope we get the original thing back. Not quite going to happen here. So let's see what happens. If I differentiate this, I'm going to wind up with okay, derivative of this is 1. So I get minus 1. This is x to the 1 to the 1 half power, so I chain rule. 1 half hits the 2, becomes a 1. Then I have x plus 1, 1 half minus 1, which gives me minus a half. Okay, so minus 1 minus x plus 1 to the minus a half. And we're asking, is this equal to minus x over x plus 1 minus square root of x plus 1? Now, you could do a difference of two squares again, but we're really only just checking to make sure we didn't mess up the answer. So we don't have to do anything too fancy. What I could do is just check that these agree on a few select points to convince myself that there's enough good stuff going on that we can leave it alone. All right, so an obvious point to always start with is zero. But if you notice, if you put zero into the thing we were trying to integrate, so that's what I'm calling old, that's going to give you 0 over 1 minus 1, which is 0 over 0. And we can't use that. So 0 is not going to be good for this problem. 
All right, well, let's have a little bit of foreshadowing. I don't want to be taking the square root of something weird. I want this thing to collapse nicely. So if I want to get a nice square, I would want a 4 on the inside here. But to get a 4, I would have to let x be equal to 3. So I'm going to start with x equal to 3. So what happens? In the old, we're going to have minus 3. And then that's going to be 3 plus 1 gives me 4, minus 3 plus 1 square root. So that's 4 square root gives me 2. And I'm left with minus 3 halves. OK, we go to the differential of our answer. I'm going to have minus 1, minus, I put the 3 in there. That's going to give me 4 to the minus a half. The best way to do this is to separate the half and the minus 1. So I do the half first, which gives me 2. 2 to the minus 1 is just flip 2 over, so I get minus 3 halves. So we notice minus 3 halves is minus 3 halves. That's looking good. OK, just to be sure we didn't get lucky, let's check another point. So again, I want to get a nice number where x plus 1 is a square root. So I go with 8. OK, 8 plus 1 is 9 square root, gives me 3, so that's good. So let's take a look. I go to the original function, I get minus 8 over, OK, 8 plus 1 is 9, minus square root of 9 is 3, gives me minus 4 thirds. We go to the derivative of the answer, and that gives me minus 1, minus 9 to the minus 1 half. And remember, we split it by half first, then minus 1. So that gives me minus 1, minus 3 to the minus 1, which gives me minus 1 minus a third, gives me minus 4 thirds. And we notice they agree again. So odds are very good that I have the right answer.